Hello everyone, I am the Motorcycle Rescuer, this is Motorcycle Rescuer channel, um, very busy day today, let's start with what we're looking at, we've got our Vespa engine swap over there, um, I need to kind of do that a bit later or tomorrow, and just down here you can see we've got the CB250, now let me switch you around, now, I've got someone coming to view this bike today. They shouldn't be viewing this bike today. They should be buying this bike today because they ignored my instructions on eBay. My instructions were to view the bike beforehand, make sure it's for you. When you press buy it now, leave a deposit. And he didn't do that. He just said, I'll come on the weekend and I'll have a look at it. So. If he doesn't buy this bike, I'm going to be pretty annoyed because the last time someone did that and they didn't buy the bike, it still cost me around £85. eBay don't care that that's happened. They charge you to put the advert back up around 15 quid, and they charge you a percentage of the sale no matter what. They basically think that you've sold it anyway, even if you try and upload the same advert. So if this guy doesn't buy this today, I'm going to be pretty pissed. Especially as we had a second guy called Steve who was interested from Bristol. Um, and he was going to look at this bike on the weekend today, you know, today or tomorrow as well. But if this guy don't buy it, then Steve may still be interested. Um, I'm going to warm this thing up. It hasn't been started in a long time. So uh, best to actually start it. It's quite important. And it's fine. I mean, it was fine. It had no issues. The fuel's been on for two weeks. There's no fuel spills. There's plenty of fuel in there and it, um, I expect it to start on idle and all of that but I guess you just got to you know just give it a bit of a wipe down just give it a bit of a clean make sure it's presented as best as it can be I think it looks great I mean look at that engine the engine spray there came out so good I should have really done the whole lump I didn't need that shiny stuff down there um, but the bike in itself seems quite cool let me set you up and make sure this thing actually does start. The main thing would be the battery, I guess. Uh, you can see in here that that engine's great, there's no issues there at all. Um, I am going to give it a minute to warm up. It's annoying you have to hold this choke. Someone said you turn it, but it doesn't turn. And then it hooks. Unless... Um, I have got, this is a brand new choker. I have got another one in there somewhere, in my garage. Somewhere. Um, that's cleaner. The cleaner? Sorry, that's that was me thinking about my garage. Somewhere in there that, that might work, but honestly, is it that hard to hold the choke up for a minute? It's not really, no. That's a bit annoying. Look at that, it's just dancing. Let's try it and it passed MOT, so it's fine. Uh, I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. Give it a quick wipe over with a cloth so that there's no complaints at all. Hopefully the guy comes in an hour or two, takes that away. 
Uh, other than that, yes, we've got our little engine swap. So, um, for anyone who I don't actually talk to, basically, guys, if you're not on my Facebook page, I talk to people on there, so they always get the first news, they always get the first videos. Um, so feel free to go and hook yourself up on, on that Facebook page. It's nothing special, but it's a nice area to chat and, and share pictures. Um, so, yes, basically the VIN number on that, that Vespa is fine and it does match the logbook. So that frame is legit. There's no issues at all. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a four-stroke 50cc engine, like we said. And, um, and it should just up and run. I am going to pop the carb off because it's also easy to do right now and give it a good clean that, that I think that's important if it uh, does work it will need a rear tire that rear tire is uh, dead I'll get a, a rear tire put on at some point now I think we can bench test this me and Jake have done it before remember we cut our teeth on these bikes this is all we used to do engine swaps and messing around and and rebuilding I think I can push that engine next to that bike pull it on its rear stand connect the spark plug up from the other from the bike to the spark plug on there and even without an exhaust put some fuel in through the cob and even without an exhaust i think that will tell us if it's a running engine or not um, i'm sure we've done that jake i don't think jake could remember but i'm sure we've done that so we'll get some sort of idea the other thing is pop the old engine out pop the new engine in just get it all done get it all lined up and if this engine happened to be uh, not a good one, you could rebuild it. But when you press down the, uh, when you press down the uh, kick, it seems to have compression, so I think this will be fine. I'm, I'm, I'm confident that this will be a good 50cc engine. Um, I have a person in mind for the bike for free. It's a new friend of mine. Really, really lovely young lady. Uh, she has her driving license, and she travels through London at the moment. So I, I just mentioned it to her and said, is it something you would like, you'd be interested in? And she, she was a bit half and half, but she did say yes. So this bike could be for her. What I might have to do, what I will have to do, which will be really interesting, guys, is put this bike through the ultra low emissions test. That will be really interesting. A 50cc moped, a classic moped through the ultra low emissions test. Again, I say it to people all the time, you just have to richen it out. There's a big chance it'll go through if you richen the mixture out before you get there. We don't want lean, we don't want high flow air filters to pass the, the NOx levels. We want rich. Now you can hear that engine guys, no problems at all. None at all. Uh, beautiful bike. Right, I'll give that a bit of a polish, I'll push it aside. Ah, I forgot. The other thing I have to do today is I have to collect the XJ550. Um, it's playing up... Oh. It's playing up on Aiden, the XJ550. Last week it needed an oil gallery plug. Um, I think I tightened the other one up too much, it had a split in it. But it has like a rev problem, he says, and it, it kind of lifts its revs up and down and it's intermittent um, I haven't seen it yet I've been to the bike three times and haven't seen it but last time it was particularly bad and the bike cut out so it sounds to me like there's a carb issue there maybe something blocking the carb butterflies or maybe the diaphragms inside the carb needing changing or something like that so I am going to collect that bike definitely and of course I'll be having a good look at it to make sure that it's safe and okay and I want to get it back to Aiden in perfect working order because up until now he hasn't really had the chance to enjoy such an amazing bike so when I say I'm busy this weekend guys I am seriously busy so let's get started I'm gonna give that a quick wipe over quick clean you don't need to see that that's boring and then I need to decide whether I'm going to get the XJ550 or if I'm gonna start bits and pieces on the Vespa Let's have a quick inspection of this engine, guys, because we haven't really done that yet. So the carb looks a bit, a bit worse for wear, but nothing major. I think it's probably been sitting out a little while, but not long. Choke looks fine. It's got a spark plug, so you just connect our spark to it, and then we've got our fuel, 
fuel lines and suction lines there. So at first glance, everything is here. Um, here are the the mounts. Now I need to find out what should that be in or out. Don't know. I feel like that is meant to be out, but we'll check that out. There's no issue there at this stage. Um, also, we will have a second mount. Our mount will work. If this mount doesn't, they should just switch over. I think. Remember, one's a one two five and one's a fifty, so they may not. Uh, it'd be really silly not to pop this carb off now, why it's like this and not connected. Turn it upside down and give it a carb clean. Uh, you'd be nuts not to, and it'll be quite interesting. Anyway, so let's let's do that. I'll run you through. I might speed it up if it's a bit slow and boring. good for you guys to see. I get asked about carb cleans all the time and I do so many in my bikes. Alright, let's pop you out. It doesn't matter if the airbox stays attached. There you go. Everything else can stay attached. Not a huge issue. Uh, if you can't get these bolts undone here guys, one, two, three. The mold grips are absolutely your friend. Now that air box is quite fixed, so I'm not going to force it off in case it doesn't go back on. We're going to use it as it sits. That didn't like it. That didn't like it. That didn't like it. Something has just became apparent to me, guys. I'm looking at this carb. The air fuel screw is missing down here. So it would have never run properly. Anyway, I'm gonna let me pop this off properly because it's it's no good unless all that is working. Unless I've missed a trick. Oh no, there's the air fuel screw. I don't know what that is then. Guess it doesn't matter. Right, I need to find the uh, the grips. Pop that case off, and I'll let you guys know. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay guys, so the grips got all three off. These are the grips, they're more grips, they grip and then they tighten down and then pow. It uh, <coughs> rarely fails me, that does. It, it nearly always works. Let's pop them off anyway and see what we're working with. Uh, it looks a bit messy, but it doesn't look, you know, shocking. Let me put you down, there you go. Now I can use two hands, that makes sense. Could be anything in here guys, could be clean as anything. Could be caked, could be rust, corrosion. Could be anything going on, but you'd be really silly at this stage not to whack the uh, jets out and give them a quick clean. One, two, three, keep your screws, they're gold. Um, and it is, it's okay overall. It's quite clean actually, guys. It smells a bit varnishy. It's clean overall, guys. I'm gonna pop the um, I'm gonna pop them out anyway. The jets out. You'd be silly not to, and just just give them a spray through. But it seems fine to me at this stage. And then I'll pop it all back up, all back in, and to an extent, the bike then is kind of ready to go. I then need to work out how outside when it's blatantly gonna rain 
I do this engine swap. It's not quick, it's not easy. Um, Jake may be coming today, that would be helpful. Fingers crossed. Or Rabjab. Maybe I'll text Rabjab. Quick clean, and then I'll chuck all this back on. So let's look at what I'm looking at under here. First of all, the pros who built this bike left their China Master Grip 11 and their China Master Grip um, size adapter on the exhaust. So um, that's extremely professional, especially if it fell off and landed in the back tire. Um, so at this stage, we need to find what the actual engine bolts are, what's holding it on. So it's either this one here, that will come out as a main frame. That might be my best bet, I undo that, and then it all just kind of sits back. And then we have to undo certain things. We have to undo um, some of the electricals, the fuel um, system we might have to drain because it, it will just keep flooding out, and so on. And then the whole back end of this engine should come out. We have to undo the rear brake line down there. That's, uh, let me see, that's that there. Get that out the way. The throttle grip needs to come out the way. That's in there. Um, the electric choke and the spark plug. And that's kind of it. Then the engine stand is on the engine here. Where are we? Here. So if we take this engine away, the back of this bike falls. So we need to put some axle stands under here. One here and one there. And I've got them, so that's not a problem. So at the moment, it looks like it will be... Uh, this bolt here on both sides and hit the pin through I think otherwise it will be this one here the engine mount bolt there and on the other side um, I, I basically I don't know at this stage again I've done it a few times but it's always different I can take this frame out I'm sure and then we can transfer the frame over off the bike that's not a huge issue, so then we put that onto there, and then we, we slot it all back in through here. I think that's the easiest way, especially as we're probably taking this exhaust and putting it on our 50cc. So let me start undoing these bits. So rear brake line needs to come off. Uh, carb stuff needs to come off. Throttle cable needs to come off. Choke electrics need to come off. Fuel lines need to come off, and the fuel needs to be blocked or drained. So... I'll let you know when I'm kind of halfway there and then it'll blatantly rain. This stuff is not particularly smooth to the touch. Um, but I'm going to do the best I can with this bike for my new young friend. So everyone, when you take away the brake line, you have to take it fully away. So it's attached here and here as well onto the engine. They're eight millimeter bolts, you pull them out. And then there's an Allen key bolt under here. You have to get it completely away from the engine like that. Also, put the adjuster cap back on so that when you're ready to swap back over, it all works. Now, depending on where the engine sits in regards to size-wise, that cable might have been changed. That might be a 125 cable. Um, I doubt it, though. I think this will just be the cable to go on to the new engine. And I have made adapters for it before anyway to make it work. So we will make that work, there's no issue there. So, first thing's done here. First thing is, is, is done with. We have undone the rear brake line. That's a good start. The next bits are quite easy. The throttle cable and the throttle cable. Let's have a look, that's very quick and easy. That's this one here. And then the uh, any electrics like this that are coming off the bike. So, that is, yeah, I mean, obviously that's very quick and easy. You just pop them out like that because they're gonna come out with the engine. What I can't forget to do is the fuel line here and here, that's the uh, suction line. They need to be, uh, the fuel line needs to be clipped off, although if the suction line's working properly, no fuel should come out when I pop it. So that should be okay. And then, there's not much else. Have a look, what am I looking at down there? There's possibly an earth down there. Let me check that out. I think there is an earth down there. See, that's hard to see from where we were. So it might be that we pop the engine back a bit when we're ready and then see if anything else is attached and pop that off. If there is an earth in there, we need to re-earth the new engine somewhere. Again, that's important. 
Uh, any more electrics? Just have a good look. The actual... What's this down here? Ah, the starting motor wire. That makes sense. So let's see over here. What we've got. How would that work then? There's the starting motor. So I think we have to take our wire off ours and pull it across to here. I think it goes in through that bolt there, which isn't on it. Uh, okay, so you see, you can use the engine on there to help you with what needs to be done. So that is... They're done, the fuel lines are fine. That's the throttle cable, I'm gonna take that off now in a second. That's easy, you just undo this bolt here until it comes off. You put it out and up, and then you work it out through there like this. Lovely, the throttle line is off. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Then that, obviously that, um, now I don't know what this is. Here, you see this? No, I'm not sure what that is, so I will sort that out and take that off because, well, because I don't know what it is. But I don't know if that even goes into the new one. There's no similar area for connection. So it's probably a one, two, five thing rather than a 50 thing. It's probably, it's probably like a, a heater or something for the carb. Because we don't even know this might be a newer engine. So that bolt needs to come out there. That's the starting motor bolt there and then that needs to come out just because it's going to pull on the wiring when it's all done and uh, then we're looking at engine bolts on this not forgetting to jack the uh, the bike up because it will fall onto the ground and normal peds are really light at that stage you just take this bar and you'd hold them literally these big old heavy fespers are made out of metal so not so much so guys, someone's out test riding the CB250. I hope he buys it because it really messes me around and costs me money if he doesn't. Um, look at this bolt. Whoa, that's the engine bolt. I pulled that out. So right now the engine isn't attached to the bike. Um, now this is where it gets really difficult. You can technically lift the body off, um, kind of swivel it around because it should be quite light compared to when it had the engine now. Or you, you know, jack the bike up and pull the engine back. Now, you can't really jack the bike up because it's, unless it's lighter now, but because it was so top, uh, back heavy, there was no pivoting point, no decent pivoting point for it. See, the front wheel's still off the ground. So I think I'm gonna try and lift the rear off the engine, make sure nothing is attached still and see where we go from there. Um, I'm nervous about this one, guys. I'll tell you why, because I don't know if I've got everything I need to make that engine work, I have to be honest. Um, so, for example, I'm, I'll be popping off the spark plug and there's a couple of earths. I don't know where they go on there. I don't know where the starting motor goes on there. But I do know that even if I can't figure out the starting motor for there, that the kick will work. As long as there's fuel in the carb, and as long as there's spark, which there will be, and as long as the CDI spark is compatible, then that 50 should get into that bike and start up, you see? So, this is a huge project I'm taking on, because this is a running, riding, nice bike. And I don't know what that is. So, tough one. Really tough one. And while I'm dealing with this, someone's out on the 250, and... Um, tearing it down as much as he can really which is a shame because uh, it's got loads of, of benefits going for it and not many negatives so hopefully he enjoys his test ride hopefully he makes it back uh, I'll let you know uh, I forgot probably the most important part of this engine out bit the shock goes from the engine mount to the frame under here um, I can take the panels off I need to take no you can't this is one big body isn't it and what am I talking about uh, I'll unbolt from here and then if I need to I'll just use this shock on that engine if it all works and fits so uh, next step unbolt the rear shock because I forgot to okay guys so uh, rear shock is undone now this is where you kind of you play clever so you lift the rear end and you just see kind of what's left like this is fairly close to being out might just need to manhandle it a bit 
Now there's a spring there that's going to have to come off and there is still this wire down here behind the tube that is an earth uh, but you can't really get to that because it's behind here. So maybe, I don't know if these come off, do they? I don't know enough about these bikes, maybe I can take this off and that will make it a bit easier. So I'll have a look at that, that's not a huge issue. Uh, and then pop that earth off and pop that spring off. And then we should have a free bike, unless I've missed something. Ah, there you go, spark plug straight away. Uh, come on. Oh, of course it's solid, it's, uh, there you go. Right. Spark plug's off, so that's, that's something else that, that now isn't holding it in. Uh, but that spring down there makes me nervous, so I've got to pop that off. And it's silly not to take that earth off, because we'll have to put that back onto the other bike. So to add to the annoyingness, I believe there is one more engine bolt in here up the front, up here. So I'm gonna pop this cover off and we're gonna see what that looks like. It's quite a big bolt, but it's definitely holding the engine in. So the man fueling the bobber didn't buy it. Now, the problem here, now he was great. He was a lovely guy and he loved the bike. He just wasn't sure it was for him. He rides bigger, older bikes, so going so small, he won't sure about. Um, problem here is he pressed buy it now on eBay. So they charge you to re-upload the advert, that's 15 quid, and then they charge you the last percentage of sale, something like 6%. It's basically about 85 quid. Um, he's agreed to pay that. He has to, really, because he didn't follow the rules of the advert. But I've told him to try and cancel the sale from his end first to see if that saves me from the final sale figure. So, he, nice guy, lovely guy, but extremely frustrating that he didn't just pop down and see the bike before pressing buy it now. So, the Bob is still here, which is, is good and bad, really, because I love it. it it's, it's, you know, I, I absolutely love the bike, and I, I'm going to throw my insurance on it, and I'm going to start using it for a while. But also, um, it had sold for eBay, and he should have just been coming to collect it rather than play with it uh over here we've got the cine smoked back now lisa says she believes the fuel is leaking somewhere now if you remember last week i said to you don't chuck the bike together so quickly because it you know you're bound to miss something that's probably what happened i can't see any signs what's this is that oh i don't know what that is i can't see any signs of a fuel leak oh yes i can hang on ah uh, oh, yes look up here okay there is a clear fuel leak Right, I'll get to that at some point and then I'll fill it right up for her so that it's good to go. Uh, that was obviously my mistake. I'll get that sorted. No problems. And we've got one more bolt on here which is driving me nuts and Jake has let me down again, which he always does, by the way. And I'm happy to share that with a thousand of you. Uh, he should be here helping me out and working on his bike, but he's not. So, no sale fix engine replacement and I'm a little bit annoyed but let's get on with it let's pop that panel off and look at this last bolt that's holding the engine in because it's killing me and it's winding me up so that last bolt was this one guys I think it was at least now and there's a grommet underneath that you have to pop off to get to the other side um, now I think this engine is completely released from the bike and then I think we need to swap the subframes over maybe I don't even know at this stage I'm a bit flustered by it all um, this might look ruthless but let's see if I can lift the body off and then I'll probably just dump it on its side or something uh, that's a joke but it's blatantly gonna pour down soon so. So there you go guys, we have an engine transplant. Um, I'll move this back a bit so we can have a good look at it. I'll spray some WD on the exhaust bolts. And then we'll look at what we need to do to transfer that and that to that. 
it's looking a bit sorry for itself but oh, my fingers are massively crossed to make sure that this all goes well so fundamentally these engines are the same um, I have to consider whether I swap these these engine brackets over if they will if they are swappable could make life much easier swapping them over uh, but I do think that that may just bolt in so I'm gonna see what the inside of the subframes like that's that bolt there and then it would be in in there or or is that the direct replacement because remember this engine came out or this version of the engine came out so I've got two options here I swap over the um, brackets that would make life easier if it worked I don't know if it will or we bolt that in anyway it's close I think so the distance between here and here would have to be the same as here and here although I think we've lost a oh no the shaft's in there okay um, so the distance between there and there would have to be the same as there and there otherwise you'd have to create brackets if that don't work then the distance in on the inside would need to be the same as the distance on the inside there to be able to swap them over so that's what I'm looking at next I have no idea how well that's gonna go I don't think I swapped the engine brackets last time I think I just plugged and played and I still think that's an option now because they are look they are sitting in the right place that's directly under the engine and that's directly under so they do seem to be set up appropriately I'm gonna have a good look and I'm gonna measure up a little bit so the front brackets aren't the right size this is too short but the rear ones are the same on the engine so I believe this engine mount and this engine mount will swap over that's the next step of this build be careful with the engines on their side like they are make sure the oil isn't spinning out if you throw it back in the engine quite quick be wary to let the oil settle and top it up if needed uh, so my attempt is to unbolt this and that and switch them over I, I won't film it because these bolts get stiff and it can be a right pain but that will be the aim and then we should have an engine uh, mount that exactly mounts back into the Vespa and, and shouldn't really have any issues I think so that first engine mount is off that went okay you'd be nuts not to take the exhaust off at this stage guys um, might as well take it off now and chuck it on the other bike uh, hopefully it fits we're gonna be using this exhaust if it doesn't fit I'll buy one it's not a huge issue uh, it should fit though, it's 50cc four-stroke, um, it doesn't really need much back pressure to run uh, a two-stroke would. So I'll pop this exhaust off and yeah, it, will ju it just makes life much easier putting it on at this stage when the brackets are off. So I'll, I'll look into that now. So there you go guys, um, the exhaust doesn't fit. The I've made these fit before by grinding down the top, but there's no point. Um, I want this bike to be as perfect as possible uh, because I've got someone in mind now. So I'll buy an exhaust for it at some point. It's no huge issue there. Uh, we can still kind of test that this engine runs. It will fire up. It will just sound stupid loud. Uh, but we'll get an idea if it's a good running engine. So new exhaust uh, will be on its way at some point. But let's continue for now with this engine swap. Uh, what we will do is, I'm gonna try and jack the bike up somehow. It's not easy because like I said, it's rear heavy. So it doesn't sit on the jack stands because the jack stands need to be further this side than the actual bolt, don't they, for it to all work. Uh, but to be fair, you can kind of just sit, just plop the whole thing on top of the engine and then start bolting it all up. We've got our, our bolt there and that's all that's on now that bracket so that's all good to go. I hope it's the right way up. That's my slight slight concern. I think it probably isn't. Uh actually hang on a minute. That is the exhaust and there is no gap. So I think I need to swap that around. Yeah, it don't sit right, so that's upside down, I'm gonna swap that around. It's only hand tight at the moment, so that's fine. Uh, I don't know if I'll bother chucking this, so this is a SIP bracket I believe, 
on the other bike, although it is then a 125cc four-stroke SIP engine with an exhaust and carb, so might be might be worth chucking that on. Let's get the engine in. That's priority at this stage, so I'm going to continue. Change that bracket the right way around. Really annoying, by the way, but only takes a few seconds. And then we will continue. So that only took a minute, guys. Um, that makes more sense now. Now the exhaust has somewhere to sit. So there we kind of have our potentially running engine with the right engine mount to go back into that frame. Make yourself some room, get the engine as close as you can. We're gonna be lifting the body onto the engine and just plopping it down basically. The hard part then is lining up all of the bolts. We need to line up the front bolt again. That's that one there and this one. And then we need to line up the the long bolt, which to be fair is that's the right frame, so there should be no issues there at all. And then you do things like you connect the rear shock up and that kind of secures it all. So we're looking good at this stage, guys. The 50 is looking better than the 125 at this stage because I've got a carb hanging off here. I need to take that last line off and, uh, and I need to kind of plop the, the 125 back together because that's going to be a sold because it works perfectly, it ran very well, so. Right, let's get that sorted. I will film, I'm gonna get the engine closer, take this carb off, put this carb back over there just for now. I will kind of try and film the plopping the engine back on to this bike. I'm sure it will be hilarious in its own right. So guys, getting the engine kind of in and lined up is quite difficult, but it is possible. You're better off with two people, I'm on my own. Um, once you've got the big old bolt through, the main bit then the rest should kind of fall into place and then we need to look at what's doing what I still don't know what this wire does here um, I don't know where it goes on our engine so I need to look at that there's no obvious place it might just be some sort of I mean, there's a lot of wires there definitely need to work out but let's get the actual engine in main bracket on the back wheel sits lovely actually there look it looks um shop bought <laughs> uh, but yes the main engine mount is on now that is good news that is what we were looking for great let me see if i can get the shock bolt through that should line up fairly easily and then it will be like hooking up the rear shock how close is that oh that's no problem that's that's there already Although, wait a minute, it's a different seat, it's a different system. I may have to swap this bracket over to there. I didn't realise that this shock... Yeah, okay. I think I might be able to switch that bracket over. I think is the key word there though, guys. I'm not sure. I'll look into that. Um, it doesn't, it wouldn't hurt to, to bolt up all the way through though. Might be a bit of pressure on the bolt. <laughs> we'll have to test that. I think one bolt all the way through will be fine. We'd have to make sure the distance. I don't think that has the brackets for this. Um, it's not a huge problem guys, it's, uh, it's bolted up here up under here we can always get the right shock it would just be a uh Vespa. no it wouldn't hang on that is a Vespa shock shock it would be a um sip shock and it would have a different bottom end to it 
So we can look into that. I will throw one bolt all the way through soon to make sure it's all lined up at this stage though. So we're getting there, very, very, very slowly getting there. So it's one o'clock guys, I got here at 10. The engine is in, okay, the engine's in and bolted. I haven't bolted the rear shock yet, I am gonna do that, but getting a, um, an original rear shock is important. I am gonna bolt this straight through for now though, so that it's safe and testable. Uh, I'm gonna make sure the new, the spark plug is back on. It's very hard to get to these spark plugs on these bikes. Uh, it's even harder on the Fespa because uh, on the Piaggio's, in the other Piaggio's, you have a hole through there. On these, you don't, so it's very hard to get it in there. So click that in and, and then put your um, God coil back on so that you've got one part of the job done. That will be the that will be the uh, spark. It will have spark. Um, next, you would put your fuel through, maybe pump some fuel through, see if it pumps up. Uh, I don't know yet how I'm going to hook the starting motor. I'm not sure how that changes over. But I know it will have spark and I know it will have fuel and we'll be able to kick this bike at some point to see if it, it, it runs at all. It all sounds stupidly loud because it has no exhaust. But that is what we're working with at the moment. Uh, yeah, that's about it. The rear brake will definitely hook up. There's no problems there at all. The front brake's all normal and fine. This new speedo drive we're still waiting on. Apparently that was sent out Monday first class. Uh, obviously wasn't. Uh, I have messaged them yesterday. It really annoys me when you buy something Saturday evening and they click it as posted because you know they haven't posted it Saturday evening because they can't. <laughs> and then they wonder why they forgot to post it on Monday and you're complaining. Uh, but let's see what comes off that. So we are halfway there. It, it's a 50cc genuine Fesper. The thin clay all matches up. It's and it's now got a 50cc engine in. Interesting bike, rear wheel does look massive, but when I put it next to the old one, it wasn't particularly bigger. You know, it wasn't stupidly bigger. And this is a 50cc engine for these bikes, so it's all good. Right, let's see. I'd like to hear something from this engine today, but that is high hopes. I'm gonna pop to the shop and get some lunch. So guys, I have done the majority of the basics. So there's actually fuel in that carb now. I sucked it through myself. But remember who the best sucker is. It's Jake Corb. Um, so we have fuel in there and the spark plug is on and the coil is on. So with the ignition on, we should have spark. There's no reason why this engine wouldn't start now. If anything, it, the issue would be it not stopping. So where was I before I was so rudely interrupted by my father? Um, so there's fuel in here and there's spark. So technically, turning the ignition on to give us spark and then kicking the engine over, we could hear something. Way, way, way too early to check. I haven't even hooked up the... I haven't even hooked up the uh, earths, but it's so tempting to see So the compression kind of feels and sounds healthy enough. My God, we're asking a lot of it um, to start up. I am gonna try and hook up the starter. So I think this going onto the starter motor through this bolt here. Sorry, I know you can't see that. It's under there, right? That should connect it all up. And then it should start like that, depending on what this is. Because on here, it has this. Now that could be the charging system. If that is the charging system, and helping to create spark, then what 
is doing it on the original engine. Don't know. So this is from the Vespa itself. I think that's stator related or coil related. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to keep tinkering. I'm going to put there's a earth down there somewhere that needs to go on. And then I'm going to play with the starter and see if it kicks over when I touch the button. It doesn't at the moment, um, but that might be because the engine's not earthed. So let me throw that earth on and we'll see. So I have connected that earth. Remember there was an earth down there? I have connected that now. So my theory is, by touching the starting motor with this red wire, when I press the starter and the brake lever, that it should turn over. That's my theory. Uh, I'll put you at a slight distance and we will challenge my theory. So guys, um, you can bench test your starting motor. You hook up the earth somewhere and then you hook up the power. On this occasion, there is an actual power cord and it's under here and it's snapped. Um, so touching the power to in there should fire us up. Right, watch, you ready? Oh, there you go. See it spinning? Right, let's, let's show you again, touch in there. Come on, there you go. You just need to make a good connection, guys, and leave it there. But look, it will spin. See it spinning? Come on, get in. So you can see that the actual power um, problem we've got here is that the that bit is snapped. That's where we should be bolting on our um, power supply, which is the one we were playing with. Now we were p playing with it around here, I must have touched it to that um, because touching it to here will just spark, it won't turn it over. Touching it specifically to this which goes inside is what is what will make it spin. Let's get you a better angle. Good. See that? Um, so I need to make a good connection uh, with the, the earth is fine because the earth is through the engine I need to make a good connection through here somehow so I'm going to have to cut off this rubber um, and probably put some sort of bolt through it uh, I'm going to try and bend this up put some sort of bolt through it and we'll bolt on the the red power cord which we had down there, that's that one down there and that will create what what we were working with anyway a starting bike off the button so let me play with that for a bit so guys, long day, it's half past three. Thanks to Rabdab for helping me out on the uh, fuel issue here. He said to me, you should have called me earlier. And actually, I did consider calling him earlier. Uh, what do we need to do to this bike at the moment? So we have a stator in there, yes, that sends spark to the coil. And then the coil sparks. So at the moment, we haven't got that. Uh, the stator wires on there do not match the stator output on here. It doesn't match this plug. I'm going to see tomorrow if I can do something. Jake is your guy for that stuff, and he's due here tomorrow, although he was due here today as well, so don't hold your breath. Uh, the rear shock here, um, ideally we need the sip one because that will, that will sit down here properly because it goes, it goes either side. It goes there and there, and then it bolts all the way through. Although, again, it's not the end of the world doubling up on that. It will be safe enough if you put a nice strong bolt through it. Uh, we got the starting motor kind of fixed at the moment. I need to just secure that full time. Uh, obviously, it didn't start up. It, it didn't have spark, so we're not overly worried about that. So I, I don't know. It's hard to sum up today, guys. I don't know if uh, I think to an extent it's a good day. I can roll this bike in and out of the garage, and then secondly, it didn't fire up today, so there's there's slightly more issues there as well. So. Let's see tomorrow. I think I've got to focus on the XJ550 tomorrow. But Jake will be about for a bit, hopefully. And we'll see what we get done. I'm thinking... Now, actually, this was um, Dawn's idea. So thank you, Dawn, if you're watching. I'm thinking matte black everywhere with some pink kind of flake. 
So I don't know if I just get pink glitter and drop it on when I'm painting it or pink flake. And then maybe the side panels down there, a pink maybe, or just that glitter pink flake all the way through. So we have a really nice matte black with a gentle flake of pink. And then hopefully if, if Poppy was interested in this bike, she would love it. Uh, maybe maybe a nice flower, maybe a nice pink flower on, on each side as well. Something like that, but honestly that is quite far down the line at the moment we need to get a good running riding safe bike and uh we're not that close to that yet as always thanks for watching uh please subscribe please share uh send me a comment and um you know i always like engaging with people in my channel so that's great and these are really interesting projects i mean this bike was a 50 cc it had a perfect running 125 in it I can't justify selling on a 50cc with 125 engine. We don't know where the 125 engine came from. It wasn't registered. It's not road legal. It's not particularly safe. So we have to do all this hard work and, and make it safe and more standard.